Hey guys, I'm Danielle from Wendell Woodworks and today I'm going to be cutting out a super cute little black bear jigsaw puzzle. I got this pattern from Barbara, Massachusetts, and she's got a really cute Etsy store I'll link down below. She has patterns for all sorts of animals and it's a great way to support another scroll saw artist. So when I think black bears, I think of black walnut. However, I am kind of a cheapskate and I like to use only reclaimed wood. So I'm using this wood I got from my aunt and uncle down in Tennessee, which is perfect because that's who this is for. It's a very dense and old wood. When I'm done with it, I plan on just staining it with the black walnut stain to give it the look that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my pattern and I'm gonna get started on my trusty Pegasus with a number five modified geometry blade. My first tip is simply to pre-sand your wood to make it easier post cutting. I then apply my template with some painter's tape or masking tape, whichever I happen to find first, and some spray adhesive. Now it's ready to take to the saw. All right, I told you guys I was using a number five modified geometry blade, but once I saw how incredibly thick this wood is, I decided, you know what? I really need to use at least a number seven. When making a puzzle, you wanna use the smallest blade possible because then you're gonna have less trace and your pieces are gonna fit together better. And it's gonna help you make the tight curves. But you also have to be able to cut through it. So you gotta find a good balance. And I think a number seven is gonna do it for me. So now that I've got the outside done and one of the back legs I just randomly did, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the pieces. Something else to check here is for a bevel. So maybe even before you start the puzzle, you can try this with the outside piece, but you wanna make sure that your puzzle piece comes all the way out and then can go back in both ways. Sometimes with a thicker wood, you can find that you're pushing the blade a little faster than it wants to go and this can create a bevel and this can stop your pieces from wanting to go in because it'll be bigger on the outside than it is on the inside. So something to watch for. If you're finding that you are beveling, you're going to want to either move to a bigger blade and if you already have the biggest one you want to use and you just need to slow down, make sure that you take your time make sure that the blade can keep up with your turns. I am more than halfway through this puzzle and I can tell that I am just struggling to get the blade through. And that's because it is starting to burn out a little bit. It's getting a little dull. It's kind of hard to tell in this lighting. And it's not because of the blade. Honestly, in my experience, I found that the modified geometry blades last the longest for me and burn the leaves. And there's no burning on the wood. It's just that I'm impatient and I'm struggling to get through. So I'm gonna switch it out to a, a fresh blade that's gonna leave less of this residue at the top too, you'll notice. And I will finish the last few of these pieces. So it's down to the last piece and it has bevels because it will not go through the back side. So a way that I try to fix this is trying to figure out where the bevel happened. Typically it'll happen around a big turn if you cut it too fast or if your blade is getting dull, which mine was. This is a very thick piece. It typically doesn't give me this much problem, but because of the density of the wood and the size of blade that I'm using, these corners are tending to bevel. So what I'm gonna do here is you can kind of see how it's bigger down here than it is the top. I'm actually gonna take this piece back to the saw and I'm gonna be careful not to recut any of the size from the top but I'm gonna run this close to the blade and let the blade catch that extra at the bottom and just kind of shave it off around here and around this corner where it kind of got bigger. And I'm gonna do this until it fits. And typically you can tell like by sticking it back in where exactly the bevel is catching on the back. So it's really just this corner for me and then it should fit, but I'll test it again, see if there's another trouble area. So my bear is all cut. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the template off now, and then I'll give it a nice sanding. I'm not gonna round over any of the edges of the inside puzzle pieces, but I am gonna round over the top just to make it look a little more sharp and smooth and good. And for the eyeball, there's a couple of options. I could drill a hole straight through for the eye, but I'm actually gonna use my wood burner and just push it in to create a wood burned eye. And then we'll get them all stained and sealed up. So here he is all finished and sealed up and just adorable, I think. And I'll ship him down to Tennessee soon where they see black bears in abundance. So my top three pull aways from doing the scroll saw puzzle was one, just to pre-sand, it saves you time at the end. Two, to pick a really sharp blade and try to use a thin blade if possible. I love the modified geometry blades. They're my go-to and they leave such a smooth, clean cut. So no sanding required at the end really outside of just maybe rounding over the edges. 
and three to go very slow. Despite having a great sharp blade, I had to go really slow in order to avoid beveling and just for your accuracy. It's always better to be slow than sorry. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Check out Melissa's Etsy store for some great patterns and have fun. Thanks for watching you guys. Happy scrolling.